Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Lunatics. My name is Lewis. My name is Naomi. And our continuing third party, third C, third whatever, I, I can't think Your right. brain is totally dead right now. Yeah. It's William talk. Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. I am the unofficial third co-host. Yeah. Always. He educates me on things that I don't understand. <laughs> he really does. I found it very educational these last two episodes. I really have. <laughs> <laughs> and we're both dealing with some nasty flu, cold, whatever, whatever. Not Rona. But so if you hear me all like scratchy and coughing and all that shit, that's what that is. But we're going to we're going to like just push through and deal with that gloriousness. I told him to man up. I really did. I was like, man up, get on the mic. This is why you should never have kids, because kids just bring you, like, bacteria and get plague-ridden. Seriously. I have gotten more colds from them than anything else. I just, I know it. When they come home with a cold, I'm like, oh, you're seeing your future in three days, and it's not pretty. (laughs) I used to get sick once a year, and it was for two days and done. Now I've gotten sick maybe three times. (laughs) That's what you get. You didn't read the fine print when you didn't read the really three, did you? <laughs> <laughs> really didn't, really didn't. All right, are we ready to get this bitch started? Let's get it. Okay. Let's William, are you ready? Are you excited? I was born ready. All right. <laughs> so before we get onto oh, our main also, topic. Happy don't... Slytherin Day. Today Mar- being March 3rd. Uh, yes. I saw happy that. Slytherin I saw your picture of Slytherin Day, right? Right. Yep. Slytherin Pride Day, bitches. <laughs> Which day? Slytherin. <laughs> Slytherin Pride. What day? Today. Today. Oh, no shit. Yes, like I said, March 21st. Lame. Why is it to the 21st? Because the 20th is Hufflepuff Day. <laughs> 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 Do you need any more reasoning than that? And I think, I don't remember if tomorrow is Gryffindor and then Ravenclaw, or if it's Ravenclaw and then Gryffindor. See, but... I always wanted, to, if I was going to be in a house, to be in, like, Ravenclaw. I think that sounds so much cooler, and nobody really gives love for Ravenclaw. When I think of Ravenclaw, I think of Indiana Jones. When I think of Hufflepuff, I think of, like, Jigglypuff yeah. from Mario. <laughs> I cannot disassociate Mario. the two. You're, yeah, Mario? Like, the, what, the, Pokemon. Like, Pokemon. No, he was in the the game. The Mario yeah, like Party Puff? whatever game, and Jigglypuff Smash was Brothers. in it. Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers. <laughs> Mario was in it. Well, so yeah, how connected I, I am to the game not a world. Mario game. <laughs> it, it, it's not from Mario. Tomorrow is Gryffindor Pride Day, and then Tuesday is um, Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. Ooh, Ravenclaw. I still think Indiana Jones. When I think Ravenclaw, why? Why? Because um, what's her name's um, last name? That was super informative. Wow, um, Marion's, Marion's last name is Ravenclaw. Is it? Yeah. It's not. It is. I don't think it is. I think the, I think the, 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 the meds and the, the crack is getting to you. Or there's something to do in Indiana Jones' uh, last, um, what do you call it, uh, Raiders, that, that is Ravenclaw. I feel like your brain is completely high on Dayquil right now. It's just... Ravenwood, you oh, ignorant. <laughs> Close enough. The Dayquil's getting to him. <laughs> God. You know, same thing. It's a it's a freaking Twilight vampire or, or a werewolf. You know, same shit. That's as bad as me saying Jigglypuff is a Mario character. It's really right along that line. That's the same thing as Twilight. All Close right. Close enough. All right. Ready to move on? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So before we get started, I found a really cool survey. Yes. Mm-hmm. That was done recently about who would you want to be in charge, the leader of a like in the event of an alien invasion, who comes to mind first? Jack Nicholson. Why Jack Nicholson? <laughs> Why Jack? Say it, it one more time. So, if an alien invasion came to Earth, who would you want to be the leader? The, uh, of the leader like, of our the alien, or like the our our leader? Our leader to you know fight the aliens. Um. Uh, we have two, President Barnett three branches from, of the uh, West Wing. That's okay. Who would you want? You'd want. President Barnett from West Wing. Yeah. What, what, is, what is this? This is so like. Isn't it Bartlett? Bartlett, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Whatever, Ravenclaw, shut your face. Yeah. <laughs> All 
All right. Those are like very interesting diplomatic answers. In, in this survey, Arnold Schwarzenegger was number one. <laughs> oh, you mean like the president would actually physically be doing the fighting, not coordinating like... Not coordinating, con- not a diplomatic behind the oh, scenes. Oh, oh then the I, guy I from want the president from Independence Day. Will Smith, is that who you're talking about? Or the president? The president from Independence Day. Oh, God, what was his name? Oh, we were just talking about that too. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, I don't remember his name, but yeah. No, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. My answer is President uh, Camacho from Idiocracy. Fuck yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, uh, so so in the survey, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger came in as the most kick-ass person to be in charge, followed number two, Will Smith. So that Independence Day vibe, definitely. Definitely, definitely. For the rest of the top five, it was David Attenborough. I don't know who that is. Bruce Willis, and number five was Tom Cruise. Huh. Wait, who, who did you know? Who, who was it you didn't know? David Attenborough. David Attenborough. Um, he's British, I think. He is. He's old. He's old, is that what you said? <laughs> like, like, I mean, look, he's old. Oh, wow. Yeah, right? That's so interesting. Uh, look at what he did his movies that people are like he would be a kick-ass guy he's done a whole bunch of voiceovers for documentaries um well he could voice over the 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 alien invasion i guess he could provide yeah, a good so, like monologue most of his stuff is just voice like document yeah he's done like nothing but documentaries interesting harrison ford came in i think seventh or eighth he came in seventh and donald trump came in eighth Oh, dear God. And then uh, Sigourney Weaver was in the top 10 as well. Donald Trump was president when we, if they took over, we'd be screwed because they would be very fine people and he would make friends with them and let them take over the earth because nothing bad is actually happening. And then be like, I did everything I could and oh, well, shit happened. So, no. Um, yeah, Sigourney Weaver, though, yeah, from Alien, fucking badass. Sigourney Weaver is just such a badass and she's really hot still. She's aged very well. Yeah. Oh, like I would want Rose McGowan from uh, what was it? Quentin Tarantino movie where she had like the uh, fucking automatic rifle as part of her leg. Yeah, from Death Proof. Yeah. Yeah, like if you're going to have Sigourney Weaver, then I want her as well because I think both of them together would make a hell of like president, vice president. I still think Jack Nicholson. That man is a badass. No, Jack Nicholson dies in Mars Attack. So why the hell would you <laughs> want him to be like? But he survives most of the movie. It's glorious. He still Jack dies, and he glorious. dies a stupid death. <laughs> oh, good. His daughter. What is it? Natalie Portman was his daughter in that, right? Yeah. She was annoying. Yeah. Early Natalie Portman, very annoying. Well, she sucks as an actress. Period. No, she doesn't. She's had Natalie Portman movies. sucks, dude. She's had some good movies. That bitch is overrated. You think everyone's overrated. You yeah. think anybody that's not affiliated with Kubrick is overrated? Yeah, pretentious. <laughs> She's a pretentious bitch. She's a pretentious bitch. It's Natalie so Portman true. is a pretentious bitch. Oh my gosh. No, if it's not Kubrick, <laughs> it's not worthwhile. That's right. Anyway. She was, she was good in V for Vendetta. Yeah. She was good in V for Vendetta. She was good. Yeah. Yeah. Don't that, was tra- Vendetta. that was garbage. Garbage, I tell you. The it wasn't even was cinema. <laughs> the movie was great. She sucked. I love the dude in it. I don't know his name, the guy yeah. who stars in it, who actually played B. I yeah. love him so much. But anyway, moving on to our main topic, jobs that suck. <laughs> I wanted to make it mix it up this week because we did sex the last two weeks, and now it's work, and it's uh, jobs that The guys that, that in the parade have to walk behind the horses with, <laughs> like... <laughs> Sorry, right? That's like the Disney job that sucks the most, but I found a survey, and it, and it listed the worst jobs that you could have in the United States. Making it very specific. So, assembly worker, bank teller, coal miner, farm worker, fast food and short order cook, fishing worker, logger. A lot of these are very outdoorsy things. I think it's because the industry is going away. Medical transcriptionist. (laughs) Isn't that what you do, Louis? (laughs) (laughs) Newspaper (laughs) reporter. And then post office worker and real uh, retail sales associate. Yep, especially around Christmas time. Taxi driver was the number one worst job that you could have, according to this survey. 
I, so does that include Uber as well or just taxi? I, I, any kind of taxi related service is what I'm guessing. And they say it's because you have to deal with the cope of traffic and people. Mostly people. I can deal with traffic. I just yell at traffic. People are stupid. I, I guess it depends. Some people have a very low threshold of dealing with traffic issues. So, Lewis. I don't know what you're talking about. Screaming profanities all the way through. But <laughs> I wanted to know. I've had a ton of jobs. Like, I've, I'm up in the 30s, I think, or 35 different types of jobs that I have had in my life. How many jobs have you had? Paying jobs, not under the table, that you worked for your parents kind of thing, and it's not legit. Seven. Yeah, I'm probably like in the 20s, early 30s. Good. So, William, I'll rely on you for this. You you can jump in whenever you want. What would you say is the worst job you had and why? <clears throat> oh, my God. Worst job. I mean, like, I've had some good retail jobs, but I've also had some really sucky retail jobs. Like, I worked for Sears for a while. Yeah. And that sucked. I worked for JCPenney for a day. I went to half of their training. I took off the mics and then ran out of the training room. And I was like, this isn't for me and left. I, I, it was well, dead. Did you Never watch really like Home Improvement? Customers. We were working on commission. So like people were always trying to do outdo each other. I, we were like in the television houseware department. Uh, so we had like a whole array of shit. It was just like, I don't know. I, 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 I enjoyed working at Toys R Us a lot more than I did working at Sears. Did you watch Home Improvement before getting a job at Sears? And like, oh, that looks like me. I could get a job with them. <laughs> think, you think no. it was like Al Borland or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I didn't have this beautiful beard at the time. <laughs> See, uh, I think the gloriousness of having so many jobs is knowing things that I really, really suck at. Like I was at Subway for three days and I was terrible at it. I remember this, this bitch came in and she wanted – the the specific type of chicken sub and I had no idea because I don't get anything at Subway so I didn't know and I made her the wrong one she waited till I was ringing her up to tell me I put the wrong kind of chicken on there I'm like well bitch you should have said something earlier take your sub and go that job did not last long (laughs) that was three days I never even got a name tag or like the hat or anything I just kind of didn't show up again I have done that with many jobs where I realized that I was not meant for that job where I've either run away mid-shift or I just just didn't didn't show up again I went to a job fair. I was in West Palm and I really needed a job. And then they were having it like in like one of those like hotel, whatchamacallit, um, you know, like where, where, where you have like little conventions or whatever. Yeah. Right. But it was like really small. And there was really nothing that I really liked. But then walking out, I ran into this guy and he was working. He said he had like a few openings for his call center. And I was like, okay. And we talked for a little bit, and he offered me a job on the spot. And I was like, all right, cool. So he's like, come in tomorrow. And I and I made sure, because I'm like, one thing that I hate doing, another job that I hated was selling Cutco knives and then the Kirby fucking uh, vacuum cleaners. I tried to I, sell Kirby vacuum cleaners that died really fast. <laughs> I, I, bought I hate, like, cold calls, because they don't know where you are. Like, you, you're basically a fucking telemarketer. So I asked him, I'm like, this is not cold calling, right? Like, we have leads and whatnot. Like, these are people that are expecting us to call. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no. Um, apparently, like, they would go to, like, fairs and people would, like, fill out stuff on, like, how to lower their monthly payment on, like, their house or whatever. You know, just shit that you, like, you fill out. And, like, 90% of the people that we fucking called had no idea what the fuck we were and we got fucking hung up on. And I, like you, I went there for one day. And then I'm like, nope, I'm not that desperate. I am um, so bad. Like, people tell me, they're like, you need to give a job a chance because I have left after a day and I'm gone. This is just not for me. I did that with a gas station. I just, I knew halfway through the day, I'm like, no, this this is just not going to work for me. And I kind of leave on my break. I use my break as a cue to kind of run away. And I literally ran away from an office building once. I got a job as an assistant and like halfway through the day, I had never left my office during the day because I didn't. Nobody wanted to talk to me and I didn't really know what to do because my boss left for the day and she called me and she's like, well, if you could look at the cost of filing cabinets, I heard people whispering in the other offices going, she's so weird. She's not leaving. Why is she, what is she doing? And I got really nervous. So I just literally ran down the street. I didn't have a ride to get home. So I was running down this back street, calling my mom on my cell phone, going, mommy, please pick me up. This job is horrible. (laughs) I've had a lot of really stupid stories like that. Same thing with a, a hotel. I worked there for two days at a Holiday Inn. A holodex and it was like a dos based system that i couldn't understand and i was like no i'm done 
I know we had done a married dos. Hated it. Dude, do you know what the? I like, I think the worst job I ever had was um right right during high school and right after high school I was a janitor for for uh, what do you call it multiple places and one of them was the youth fair. I couldn't get the smell of fucking corn on the cob out of my clothes <laughs> for months, dude. That shit was embedded in my nose and it was fucking gross. What's wrong with corn on the cob? Still to this day, I loved corn on the cob. Yeah, you're a hater now. Yeah, there. you are a hater of corn on the cob I now. I cannot. Still to this day, that just makes I, me gag. Dude, I, when I worked in a movie theater, I smelled like popcorn and that artificial butter every single day. That shit got ingrained in my clothes. I swear, I just smelled it all the time. It lives... Just well, like gets up in your nose and you can't unsmell it at any time. So you walk around all the time going, is there popcorn somewhere? Like that's all I could smell all the time. At least it's edible food. This is the, the garbage. Is no, I know. But this was the garbage because I was a janitor. Oh, okay. So Ew. it was the remainder of it. And it just, it, it, it has that horrible smell. I did that for three years making my way through high school see but you toughed it out i did not have you guys ever like had to, like just toughed through a job that you absolutely hated but you just yep. stuck with it dunkin donuts toughed it out oh come on the dunkin yeah I'm no but i hate it like the people like <laughs> my manager was a complete bitch like absolute complete bitch but another job that i hated um when i first moved to new york i really don't want to name names but it's like an Italian, a chain of oh, yeah. Italian stores that also has restaurants in them, uh, where you eat a lot. Um, but uh, I was coming off of Marriott's, which is like one of the, like, the top customer service hospitality blueprints of the world. And I was, you know, trying to implement this to like better our customer service. That's what they fucking hired me for. Nope. Like, I was not allowed to write my own email. Like, we had to deal with, like, you know, customers asking questions or, like, having issues or anything like that. We had to cookie cutter, paste what, like, a generic fucking response and change the name, which I, as a customer, when I get a cookie cutter response, fucking hate it because I know I'm going to probably be in for a really bad time because it shows me that they don't care enough to write a custom fucking response to my needs and they're just like oh here's the issue there you go oh here's another issue there you go it's like and i hate it working like the customer service then i then i transferred to like the restaurant department and i loved it there because i was also making a lot more money but um yeah so that was just like horrible experience just not one of the worst but horrible fucking experience I love it when you get a rejection letter for something you've applied for, and it's like, dear applicant, we have reviewed your many wonderful, <laughs> wonderful skills, but it's so generic. You're like, I can't even put my name in, or it's like all capped, so you know that it's literally a plug and play. Yeah. I'm like, seriously, like, I can't yeah. deal with that. I don't know. Like, jobs are hit or miss for me. Like, I, I, I but I generally, if by if like four or five hours in, I'm like, no, this is just not a good fit. I, I will not tough it out. Not even. That's why I have such a high number of jobs. I worked in an army surplus store once. That was a disaster. <laughs> I had no idea what to do. I was just kind of wandering around. They were like, oh, front shelves, do stuff like that. And I was like, okay. And I did that for eight hours. And then I called them to find out what my next shift was. And they were like, oh, you're not on the shift anymore. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I didn't front really well. Like, I, like it, was, it was bad. I just got fired and they didn't even tell me. They're just like, no, we stopped putting you on the schedule. <laughs> I was a fish at friendlies, and that lasted about a month. And I was like, "Fuck this shit." Just- yeah, I think I think the lo- the shortest um, work that I ever did was two months at an oncology pharmacy, inpatient oncology, which was the fucking worst. I couldn't take it. I was like, "Nope." It, it was just it was little kids mostly, and. <laughs> these were people on their deathbeds and I, I just, I mentally, I couldn't take it. I was like, no, I'm well, not. Way to have what? some altruistic reason why you couldn't handle your job. I've run away just cause I didn't like the people that were there. And I was like, Nope. I had one job. No one spoke a damn word of English. They spoke broken English the whole time. <laughs> and I knew they were laughing their asses off at me cause they kept pointing and I heard gringo or gringo a lot. And I was like, all right, I, I know enough of this one word to know that I am not belonging in this environment. So I ran away. It's a problem with Florida though. So that was the gas station job. Like that was like, no, this clearly is not going to work on any level. No. Yeah. 
So yeah, no, I, I think that that's the worst one for me. And then I did CVS retail for nine years. I don't think you can say that's a job that really sucked if you stayed there for nine years. I don't think that qualifies. A job that sucks is a, I mean, like literally two months is the shortest job you've had. Mm-hmm. That's the shortest job I've ever had. The hell, man. Seriously. Okay, what about you, William? What's the shortest uh, job you had? A day. Yeah, mine's about like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> like the, 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 the call center, I was just like, I can't do this because then like, you would only make money if, like, when you called somebody, they would close with you. So you had to know how to close and everything else. And it's like everything was on commission. Like the hourly, I think the oh, hourly pay was like three bucks an hour. I was like, I'm good. I like, love getting now, those calls though when they're trying to jam as much into that like first thirty seconds before you can interrupt them and you're like oh crap this is a sales call because they just I'm, I'm like I'm like oh there's a human on the other end of the line and I try to be really patient with them but I'm like I'm so not interested and they're like no 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 let me just connect you with management now I'm like no just I want to hang up but I feel really bad because I don't want to be a mean person knowing that this is just a person trying to do their job you know. I get stuck. It's a catch twenty two because I'm like, I know this job sucks. I know that you need to make these calls, but I really don't want to listen. I'm like Dorothy, no, I won't have a good day. Just stop talking to me. I don't want you to call me anymore. That's why I don't answer my phone anymore. That's my way of getting around having to deal with that awkwardness if I don't want to be mean to another human. Yeah, who's trying to make these calls? I, besides that job, I think the. The shortest job I had was three years besides that. I say bless the people who have been in the really crappy jobs that I wouldn't <laughs> want to have. And they just, they do it without a problem. Like, I did it for a while. It's I don't think I could handle fast food. Subway taught me that I couldn't deal with that, with the finickiness that comes with food. Have you ever worked in fast food or no? I refuse. William? Uh, I mean, we had quick service restaurants at the job in, I had in New York. So I mean, we, I guess you worked at Dunkin' Donuts. That kind of People Dunkin are Donuts. so fussy about their food and they're so mean about it i could not deal with that i I, my patience level is not enough for which i should ever be in a in a food facing environment because i probably throw stuff at somebody when i finally had my last moment where i'm like screw this bam another another job i had like about two and a half years that like i was like oh my god here we go again every time um i did podcasting for about two and a half years (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you had to deal with my dumb ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did that, that actually, I mean, obviously I wasn't a paid job, but obviously I fucking loved it because here I am again. <laughs> <laughs> but, Either um, that or so you're like, a masochist. So like, what are some of the better jobs that you guys have had? Um, Film production. Shut up. Okay, no, you can go ahead. I just, I hate that. The glamour jobs. He's like, oh, well, just rubbing, you know, elbows with the celebrities. I worked um, with Falcon Entertainment, which was uh, basically, they did uh, music videos for for um, hip-hop and rap artists. So I did uh, music videos for Pitbull. Um, the Kulo video is yeah. actually, it's actually the video that I worked on. Um, Soldier Boy. When, his, oh, when he nice. first got his start, that yeah. big song that came out, that was actually us working that video. We did that video for him. Uh, we recorded with uh, Benzino. We got to meet all these people. We used to go VIP to all the clubs and all that stuff and record the clubs, the VIP rooms and all that stuff for promotions. And it was really cool. We got to go to the Brazilian Film Festival. Got to meet Michael Mann. Um, uh, what's his face? So what happened? I know, seriously, that to CVS, dude, come on. It was, the biggest thing was, I was on track to, to go into <laughs> producing, and there's a certain milestone that you hit, and you can't get past that unless you get into heavy drug scene. And it was just, it's, producing is all about connections. It's all about building connections, establishing connections, and keeping those connections moving forward. And the problem is, though, if you're not doing coke and doing drugs at the table where all these fucking people are at, you're not going to get shit done. And every party I went to, it was like that. Every connection, every place that we went to that had that kind of connections that needed to be made, they're all around drug rooms or fucking drug tables. And I'm like, I'm not going to deal with that shit. I lost so many friends to due to drugs that I was like, fuck this. I'm out. 
I can't do this. So you went to pharmaceuticals. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> eh? It's legal from drugs. discussing people to the pill people. <laughs> and mostly it 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 was good. It was like actually helping some people, you know? Like one of the the highlights of my career at CVS was getting a commendation from uh, one of the commissioners in Miami. The man was in a wheelchair. He was wheelchair bound. And the actual commissioner used to come to the, to CVS and, or Eckert's back then. And uh, what do you call it? He, he used to like have trouble because he was in a wheelchair and not everything was accessible to him. So he couldn't reach certain things on the shelf and all that stuff. And I, I really helped him through it. And also just maneuvering through the prior authorizations and all that shit. And having him come out with a team of people to give me a commendation for doing my job, I, it just, it felt fulfilling. <coughs> and that started a career that I've been doing for 18 years now. So, yeah. All right. So quick second, Lewis, don't move. Naomi, mm-hmm. stand up, walk behind the table and then just listen to my voice. Just go stand behind the table and face Lewis. Okay. <laughs> Lewis, just don't move. Because this has been bugging me. Like, not bugging me, but I've been looking at this all after, like, since we started. I, I see this, what you're like, looking at. What is he looking at? Look at now, Tucci. look at Lewis, right? And now look at Tucci. <laughs> and tell me it doesn't look like it's fucking his own picture that he signed and put up on his own wall. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. That's what our youngest daughter thinks. <laughs> she comes in all the time. She's like, look, it's Lewis on the wall. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, just because he's bald doesn't mean it's me. <laughs> but it's also the fact that he's got like that shaded five o'clock shadow wannabe facial hair that they both have going. Yep. And like, the only thing they think is different is like his glasses are more round than Lewis's. But like, other than that, <laughs> it's that's so true. pretty much the only difference. <laughs> Also, Samara commented on, like, the picture that you tagged us with the three cats. She's like, there was no doubt in my mind that Dank was define evil. (laughs) And she's got a point. I thought you were define evil. I did. I just, Brandon, the one in the middle, the oblivious to all. I I, I just think the define evil is the, the, the one with the looking to the side, like, oh, I'm distracted. Squirrel. Right? All good. What was your best job, William? Oh my God! What was my best job? Was um, job. Well, yeah, did. you did. I I worked for the Hartford Insurance Company, which was actually really good. It was really great, great benefits. I worked in the ARP department, and I, I was loving it. Like one of the best jobs I've had. I loved working for Marriott, especially at the beginning. I learned so much, made some good friends, and but especially just like the job that I got now was because I worked at Marriott because I have all this knowledge and they're like, we want to learn this from you. So please come work with us. I, I, I've never walked into a job interview where the man, like, you know, when you walk into a job interview, people say like, you know, sell yourself so that, you know, you get hired. I didn't have to do that this past time. Like the manager, like the, the he's second in command of the entire place. Cause it's a, it's a mom and dad kind of run, run, like it's a high end one. Yeah. And the son is now running like the entire front end and the uh, operation. And basically he was like, I'm not letting you leave here without saying yes to this job. Like he was selling the place to me for me to say yes, to come work there. Wow. And I'm like, awesome. holy shit, because of all this knowledge that I had from Marriott. So like, I, and I definitely loved working at Marriott. The place was great. It was like acres upon acres of land and sunshine and whatnot. Um, I did coaching for a while and that was a lot of fun as well. I I kind of found my niche in coaching. I, I love doing it. I just never then had to be the, the connections to go into, you know, deeper coaching. It was at a summer camp, but I coached soccer and football were the two main things. And then they're like, you want to coach lacrosse? I'm like, no, I only do real sports. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> We were watching American Pie, and I was like, lacrosse? Who the fuck plays lacrosse? That was such a big thing in my high school. Lacrosse was a big thing. And I was like, well, American Pie takes place in Michigan, so it makes sense that... Yeah, I had never even I had no idea what lacrosse was until we moved stateside. Yeah, no, I idea. never heard of it either until, until I saw American Pie. That was my first 
introduction to lacrosse. I was like, what the fuck is that? It's is that like a weird made up uh, hockey game? with butterfly nets. That's yeah. pretty much what it is. But uh, but I love the coaching gig, except like, I had to drive like an hour, almost an hour and a half each way just to get to it because it was on the other side of the state. So fun times. Um, I worked a, – a friend of mine owns a <clears> – he <throat> got a lot bigger now, but at the time he was start, just beginning a production company, and he asked me a couple of times to help him with filming and producing – not producing and editing stuff. And, oh, my God, did I find myself at home. I was just like – I, we hit the ground running and it was just, I never felt out of place. I even not knowing a lot of the stuff I literally picked up as we went and I never found myself more at home doing something and loving something like I did then kind of like when I was younger and I got cast in a couple of like independent movies working in front of the camera. I was like, and working around film industry, I'm like, yeah. Oh my God, this is like what I want to do again. Never found my, you know, the right connection or whatnot. But I haven't given up on that. Like if somebody were to walk up on the street right now and be like, you can quit your job, come work as a PA and learn the, you know, the ins and outs behind the camera and then, then move on up. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, pay me minimum wage, pay me like 15 bucks an hour. Cause I still need to make a fucking living, but you know, pay me like 15 bucks an hour. I'll fucking start as a PA and learn my way and fucking go to the top because that's where I find myself the most at home. I know a lot of people are like, Oh my God, behind the scenes, there's so much shit going on and people, I'm like, and that's fine. But there's so many other jobs that I didn't like that my friends are like, this is like the best job ever because that's what they like doing. So it's like, yeah, I, like, love, I have not given up on that. I love being behind the camera. That That is one of my favorite jobs. I, when I've done cinematography before or even just, oh, what do you call it? Um, developing film and all that stuff. I love it. That smell of actual film is so, oh, I love that smell. They're I was terrible behind the camera. I'm going to be honest. I was, when I was in film school and they were like, you know, <laughs> they were like put together like a, a project that's, that's a, like civil oriented, some kind of issue you cause about and like you, that you care about. And I really didn't care about anything. So I picked equal rights in voting because... It was like something I Googled and I was like, all right, let's just go with this. My video was so boring. I could feel people's minds literally dying while watching this two minute video I did. And I was like, I quickly learned that I was not meant to, uh, to do that. And I got bored because they, they mixed us up in these groups and they were like, all right, this time you're going to do camera this, you know, next time you're going to yeah. do the stuff in the box where you're mixing everything together. And I got bored while I was on the camera. I kind of started looking around at other things when I was supposed to be filming someone else's work for them and they're like Naomi you're demoted from camera duty you can be the girl that stands in the back with the water going do you like some water <laughs> the craft services I love uh, lights. I was um, never meant for it like I just got bored really easily and the cameras I, I've been were heavy working on like on a short movie and I, I gotta pick up again because I've been it, it's still obviously in script form and playwright form or screenwrite form but once I'm done with it if like and I get it like uh, not patented, but what's the word like uh, uh, copyrighted? Yeah. Um, like I definitely want to see if anybody's out there that has like the equipment, and we can literally put this because like if I ever just do one thing with my life that I can leave as a legacy, and it's like a short fucking movie that I can throw on fucking YouTube, I'll be fucking happy. But, so I worked on a film while I was um, working at Blockbuster. It was called Bottle Cap Sneakers and Cigarettes. And it was actually a script that one of my best friends and I wrote together. And there's, we filmed it. We shot the full thing almost a month and a half, two months. And nothing came of it. We, we ended up, I never ended up editing it because we had like, I think 12 hours of footage. Some exorbitant amount like that. Because it was a two hour film. And it, it was just like, it was too much. There's no way. I love your YouTube video of you, like, in the middle of a zombie apocalypse on an abandoned road, and you're like, well, I'm just going to review this movie that was streaming on Hulu this week in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. Like, like what kind of drugs were you on when you were filming that? What were you thinking? <laughs> Those know. were glorious. They really were. <laughs> it was boredom. I went through, I went through all the original Man Bites 
film all of those. I went, when you guys were still doing the in-person mm-hmm. movie reviews and all of those, I went through all of them. It was it was quite an interesting journey watching all of those. <laughs> in in college, I took a um, uh, mythology class, and the main project was we were broken up into groups and we had to in our own way we were also assigned a random mythology mythological story and then we had to present the class we could do it any way we wanted people could write different like literally just stand there with a piece of paper and just read the fucking story they could make a movie make whatever else we shot a still movie like literally just pictures that went through the story and also still poke fun at it and we threw it up on youtube i will send you guys the link because i find it funny it's a story of perseus versus medusa okay nice okay. but it, when i say we had no budget on this movie we literally had no budget on this movie we were using we literally used our sheets as togas like Toga party, <laughs> right? Like the the part of like there was a sea serpent that came out of the water. I used I had my pet snake, and I took my pet snake. I put a little bit of water in the bathtub, put the snake in the water, put a Lego figure in front of the snake, and <laughs> angled the camera so that you see the, the the view from like behind the Lego figure at the snake. And that was our sea monster scene. Like That's pretty glorious, actually. It's it, <laughs> it really it's, is. It, it, it's fucking amazing, and I've got to find it. I don't remember where. Oh, it was. Did it, please tell me I liked it. So at some at some point, so that I have it. Yes, there mm-hmm. it is. Cool, awesome. I'm going to send you guys the link to it when when you when we're done. You guys can watch it. It's it so- makes the room look like an Academy Award. So is it safe to say that both of you, like with the when you got asked the what do you want to be when you grow up, it was film related? Yes. I actually wanted to be an architect. Really now? Yeah. Why? Like legit an architect. Why? I don't know. I just I always thought it was a fascinating career and I always wanted to be part of that. I wanted to be able to to build buildings and design buildings. I think you showed this to me and Brandon at some point. Yeah. So oh, I, I'm never gonna watch it again. But I'm like, wait, I'm like that, that weird video weird. where people are cutting someone up. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. That video is so weird. Yeah, the the salesman who <laughs> comes in and he's like chopping people up. Yeah. So that was actually part of a 48 hour film festival that I've done. I've done three of them, and we have 48 hours to write. Oh my direct, god, I want to do one of those so bad. I want to do one of those so weird. bad. Like where like you literally show up, you don't know what the hell you're shooting. And you have 48 hours to make the script, shoot it, edit it, yeah. and present it. Yeah. Like, that's hardcore, like, filmmaking right there. Like, that you got to make sure that you freaky. have that oh one God. imaginative person in your group or you're all fucked. Because yeah. if nobody can come up with anything good and you're just sitting around, you're just losing fucking time. <laughs> so, yeah. it's like... The, I, actually, I loved it. I love doing it. I've done it three different parts. Um... I think we did, uh, the first one was horror, the second one was supposed to be comedy, and the last one was music video. So we did a music video, the last one that I did was a music video. Did you know? Yeah. Which Wait, was actually what, was it? what was the song? Uh, some local band, um, they were like country band, actually, ironically. <laughs> so the second video I'm sending you guys was actually a, a video that I directed and edited and everything with a friend of mine and um it was actually my proposal to charity and huh. we actually used oh the yeah I remember. festival as an excuse because so we could shoot around and, and i was using her and her friend as like stand-ins and then on in one scene i end up proposing to her and she still thinks that it's part of the fucking movie until she realizes that it's like no, I'm actually proposing to her, and this entire thing was a setup, and it was fucking glorious. So, yeah, watch that because they, I mean, obviously, didn't work out between me and her, but the movie was fucking great, and I can still use it as a credited movie because it says directed by my fucking name. So, it counts. <laughs> Resume. 
So speaking of like proposal fails, I remember hearing the story once a guy, he set it up there. Like it was a group of friends playing that game where you act it, not charades, but it's like the board game where you're doing charades in it. That's and right. he, you know, he set it up. So when he drew a card, he was going to act like he was, you know, proposing. And that's how his girlfriend was going to get the clue that he was actually proposing to her, but she was super competitive and really wasn't getting the point. So he's like doing the whole, like getting down on one knee, showing a ring box and she's just not getting it. She ends up whapping him across the head. He changes his mind. And he's like, no, I'm done. Like he knew everything he needed to know in that moment about wow. how this is not going to work. That's I always, I just, that, that sticks out in my mind as one of those like proposal fails. I love watching those videos though proposal fails that just really didn't go the way they thought I, it was gonna go I or the no that. i can't watch those just because like i'm very empathetic and i feel that i actually cried those i so i feel so bad for the person that went through so much and in the end it's like no i don't feel bad for the people that are cliche like when they get denied and it's like valentine's day or christmas day or her <laughs> birthday or whatever it's like you are so unimaginative that you deserve to be told no I still feel bad for them, but not as much. But I feel like if you were going to do one of those really public ones, you have to be a hundred million zillion percent sure that she is going to say yes, that that is going to work. Like you really need to go in that sure and not go in where it might, it could go either way. And you're hoping that blowing her away with your creativity and a big overwhelming display is really going to sell it to her. Yeah. Did you guys see the crazy target lady? She went into target wearing a wedding dress and she dragged her boyfriend out while he was working. And she was like, now or never. We're going to get married. Wow. I would have been like, never. Bye. Seriously, right? I mean, like... Yeah, it's a little much. I don't know. I, I, the, the big proposal thing, I go back and forth. Sometimes I'm like, oh, that's sweet. And then other times I'm like, wow, that's a lot of work for that moment. Okay. Like, One of just... my favorite ones is a flash mob proposal, but it's, it's a small uh, flash mob. It's at Downtown Disney in California. And... He had it set up where him and his girlfriend and their families are all just walking downtown. And apparently they have like this kind of like they have downtown Disney in Orlando across from World of Disney. They have like that stage. Well, they have a smaller one in Cali. And these group of people start, you know, dancing together to uh, I Just Want to Marry You or whatever it's called by um, Bruno Mars. And then like half in, halfway through the song, he jumps in and starts dancing and on the bottom little square you see her reaction her understanding what's going on and she just starts bawling and that gets me every single time that was great and another one with the same song this guy puts his girlfriend in the back of the jeep and has her put headphones on and he got the entire street to come in and they each have a role while the song is playing and at the end, there's like a marching band and they open up and he's there in a tuxedo and he walks up to her and still sitting back in the car and proposes to her. And I'm like, oh my God, all the feels. <laughs> That's a I, lot of work for a proposal. Mm-hmm. Very, I don't know. That's when you I, know I, she's going to say yes, because if I had an inclination that she <laughs> didn't say no, I'm like, uh, when I get married, cool. That was a proposal. <laughs> I don't know. I just, the, the big proposal thing, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I feel like I would just be sitting there going, you dumbass, wasting this time and energy on this. Or what if, you know, like I knew one girl, she, this guy, he took her to a restaurant and he proposed and I was like, ugh, that's the lamest thing you could do. And she was like, so while she was telling me the story and I didn't realize how hurtful that would be because I really don't have a good filter on myself where I was like, oh, that's lame. Someone else did it in Vegas, yeah. which I think is another lame one, mm-hmm. proposing in Vegas. Yeah. I don't know. I guess to each their own, right? Yeah, but still, I mean, they, there's certainly like proposal places, like restaurants. It's like, all right, first of all, it depends on the couple and it depends on what you're going to do. If you know your significant other isn't big on public spaces or mm-hmm. being embarrassed in, in public right. or would get embarrassed, why the fuck would you do that? I don't know. It, it, it's just dumb. That's it's like, true. You, you got to play it according to... to the person that you're proposing to. Oh. Now, what would you do if, like, a girl made some grand gesture proposal to you and you weren't planning on it? Like, that was not in your like your brain. Would you take it as a compliment or, like, oh, switch yeah. it on the dudes? Like, yeah. how would you feel if your girl made this big, huge, public proposal to you? I'll take it as a compliment. So, I, I'm the kind of person that whether I am ready to get married to her or not, 
I'm still going to, especially if you went to this whole ordeal and it's on camera and everything, I'm going to say yes on camera and not break her heart. And then when everything's said and done, have a sit down with her and be like, <laughs> let's talk about this. Like, are you a hundred percent sure? Where do we like, you know what I mean? Like, was this an impulse thing? Just because like, I'm not going to be the asshole to break her heart on camera and then this fucking video go viral and be like, oh my God, blah, 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 blah. And then make her look like a fool or make me look like an ass or anybody that's involved, especially if it's a big hoopla. But I'm like, you know what? Yeah, because then if in the end we're like, you know what? Yeah, this is, maybe there was something there I didn't see before, which now after going through all this, I realize how much you love me as well. Or like, you know, or the doubts that I had are now eradicated because you went through all this just, then it's like, okay. And we will always have that as our engagement. So yeah, so like, I would not be the kind of person to like walk away and be like, "Mm, no. So you wouldn't feel weirded out if the girl proposed to you? No. I don't know. I don't know if I would ever have the guts to do that. I feel like if you got to know, it would just, you would, there'd be no, (laughs) there'd be no rebound from that. (laughs) I feel like you would take, Naomi, you would take like the ring box with the ring in it and throw it at Lewis's head and just go, marry me. And be like, (laughs) all right. So, because if you're like, that's all I can come up with and that's what I'm going to do. It's really true. with all the details. It seriously is. (laughs) I, I probably would not think of anything better. Like, I'm tired here. If you could just give yourself a nice uh, speech about how much I love you and put the ring on. <laughs> also, while you're at it, can you write both of our vows? Because I just can't be bothered with that either. <laughs> oh my gosh, he nearly shit a brick when we went to go get married. And I was like, if I just say ditto, is that going to be bad? He's like, I will walk away. If rings come off, you know. <laughs> yep. But there's still our actual ceremony in October. Oh, another yes. opportunity. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's why I'm not allowed to go second, apparently. <laughs> no. You know what? I think it would be hilarious. Ditto. Covers everything. Did you guys pick the uh, wedding party already? The what? The wedding party. You know, oh, my gosh. I spent, guys? like, two months trying to convince uh, him that it's not a wedding court. Like, I made him Google it because this is dumb fuck is like, we need our court already. I'm like, what the fuck is a wedding court? He's like, you know, the well, court. It's a wedding party. Thank you. You know, Thank you. It is a wedding party. Whatever, right? <laughs> okay, did you put your wedding court yet today, Your Majesty? No, not yet. The court hasn't been chosen yet. The court? Oh my gosh. You seriously, like, I don't know where the fuck that comes from. That's like high school prom with your court. I don't, I don't know, know what man. the hell. Whatever. It's the same shit. Like, we got into a, de- a, a debate because he was like, a rehearsal dinner isn't actually a thing. I was like, it is. It, it is literally a thing. He's like, why do you have to rehearse to eat? I'm like, this fucking dumbass. It's not what it is. Seriously. like, I'm just going to show up as a fucking dementor and be, people ask why. I'm like, because I'm here to suck both their souls out of it after they say I do. <laughs> he can be like, I'm part of your court. I told him, I want you to be the penguin from Batman with a monocle and everything. I, I think that would be awesome and glorious. <laughs> But I already have Bane. That's perfect. He's the enforcer. Make sure nobody's running away. Nobody's getting stood up. See, you have oh. a job. You have a very specific job. Make sure this one shows up, even though we're already married. So it doesn't really matter. But Fat Thor. Fat Thor would be glorious. I mean, I can definitely get the, the great thing about Fat Thor. <laughs> it's kind of like the it's kind of like Deadpool. I can wear whatever I want as long as I have the hair, the wig and at least Mjolnir or or uh, Stormbreaker, and then still dress like in a fucking tuxedo or a fucking suit, and people will be like, "Oh, look, the fucking dressed up Thor." So, I mean, that works. I actually have like I uh, I went to LeakyCon and this guy was he was getting rid of like some of his cosplays. He was like, "I'm never going to use this," and it's like this long red um, <coughs> robe that's like got like this it's it's goldish looking trim to it and i was like oh griffin thor this is perfect so and i just need to I, I, he was taller than me so i need to like hem it at the bottom of it it's fucking perfect i can wear like shirt tie and whatnot and then put this glorious mantle on me and be like you're gonna be oh, all outdressed by your by the guests all everybody you're not showing up as um 
Uh, what's Dressing his up name? as a hobbit. Oh, okay. That's still better than I thought just, you were going to I mean, up. I'm like a jeans and a t-shirt kind of girl. The dressing up thing is really not yeah. for me at yeah. all. No. But I guess we got to wrap this up because we're still recording, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we actually got to wrap this up at some point, right? Oh, yeah. No. I mean, like, this is one of our shortest recording, though, because we've only been recording for like 45 minutes. So. It's been an hour, isn't it? No, because really? we, start, we officially started recording at 2.14. Okay. Well, <laughs> yay for jobs that suck that segued into a lot of other stuff. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So, like, you know, our typical podcast. Yeah. Truth right. in that. Truth in that. All right, cool. Thank but, you, yeah. boys. Thank you for your jobs that suck, even though, Lewis, you just <laughs> sucked because you had nothing to add to the conversation. <laughs> yeah, he added a lot of coughing. That's that's good. He did. There you go. <laughs> he was a Pokemon. He was coughing and wheezing. His energy will come back next week, hopefully. Yes, for there sure. There we go. But thank you, guys. And thank you, everybody, for joining us for this podcast. Um please check us out on our websites. What, what are your websites? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the website is. <laughs> and we've been doing this for almost kind of three thing. years, ladies and gentlemen. Three <laughs> years. We're still trying to find our footing. It's okay. We'll get to it eventually. We Maybe for our together. fifth year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Got like a coughing fit now. <laughs> Man bites be the other calm. Um, <laughs> please check us out on Etsy and everything else as well under Lunatics. With how do you double- spell Lunatics? L U N A T T I X. Ah, see, because most people would have probably looked up for it for like you know the correct spelling. No, 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 no. We're, no, we're dyslexic. Like- we spell it wrong. <laughs> of course. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> You're very welcome.